Susan Meeling, Lady Meeling, Susan Meeling, Lady Dory Bell. I've been known by quite a few names. So, today is the 6th of May, 2020, and um, decided I was going to discuss something different ish, ish, well, different ish, because I've, I've had quite a few different life experiences. In, you know, a, despite a very short amount of time, extremely short amount of time. So there is this one particular um, company commander I had when I was in a uh, medical holds unit. And so, and the, the, the high turnover rate for medical hold was a lot. <laughs> like, I think it was, I think we went through three or four different company commanders um, in medical holds unit before I was out of medical hold, before it became warrior transition unit at Fort Sam Houston, now Joint Base Lewis, or Joint Base San Antonio. Joint Base Lewis McCord is in Washington State, I was taken. So um, the last company commander that was in medical hold was Captain Pagata. And he he kind of he kind of got lambasted on that one because he I don't think he knew what he was walking into <laughs> at all whatsoever. Before Captain Pagata was Captain Morning or Captain Cupcake. My Captain Cupcake, not your Captain Cupcake. And <laughs> just saying. And then before Captain Cupcake or Captain Moore. And that is not in a disrespectful way at all, whatsoever. Just saying. Um, for that was Captain Beer, and I think before Captain Beer, there was another company commander. I just can't remember the name of the company commander. And that was when, like, I first arrived at Medical Hold, and it was being switched out to Captain Beer. So... Captain Beer, he wound up being transferred out because he got a little attached to a few exotic dancers in the area. I think his favorite club was either the Palace or Wild Zebra. They're kind of a they're kind of close to one another, um, not next door, but like across the street from one another, if I'm not mistaken. And so Captain Beer had, and you know. <laughs> I like going to strip clubs to watch. <laughs> I'm very much a voyeur. I don't deny that. That's a, that is a thing, by the way, <laughs> obviously. Um, but at the same time, when I go, I'm respectful to the dancers. You know, I'm respectful to the staff. Um, I'll talk with them and have no... Like, I understand, I understand that at a, a strip club or a gentleman's club, despite the fact I'm a female, I get that, um, or an exotic dancer club or whatever it is, that the, the main premise is to look at that sort of stuff. However, I actually would speak with the, with the different staff members. Like, I'd actually discuss stuff with them. It wasn't always, you know... A, you know, like your whatever. Not that I didn't appreciate, not that I didn't look. I, I mean, realistically. However, and that was male and female. I, I, I admit, I was looking at the bouncers, I was looking at the managers, I was looking at the bartenders. <laughs> I am a pansexual. So, you know, there is that. Where's my. <laughs> at the customers there were a few of them that was like mm. eh, yeah and so you know I and not just in the regard of hi but you know in oh, let's talk like you know you can have discussions of all sorts you know you that some people would actually be surprised if if they went and and actually were open-minded in certain regards um 
But I, I spoke with the different ones, and it wasn't always, actually, I don't think there was ever a time when I just focused on the physical aspect when, at any point, actually. Like, I mean, I, I made commentary here and there, but it was very minimal. Because usually, when we talked, it was about various aspects. And, and, and the females, as far as the cocktail waitresses and the exotic dancers, they knew that they didn't have to BS with me. Like, you know, in the initial portion, it was like, oh, and, and then once they realized, oh, I can actually talk with you. Like, I can actually, like, talk with you. I could tell you about my day or night. I can actually discuss stuff with you. I can actually hang out with you. Not a problem, like, at all. Now, I'm going to pause real quick because there was one particular dancer that was at All Stars, and when she was with her children and I was with my children, she had brought up the, and it was like, um, it's like, they don't know I go. <laughs> like, my children are young, and, and not that I have a problem with it at all. Like, I don't. It's, it's obviously. It's just one of those, like, I don't, I don't want them, like, knowing at, you know, elementary school age that <laughs> I go, <laughs> like, you know, and we were, I think we were at a McDonald's, walked in, and she's like, oh, I haven't seen you at the strip club in a while, why haven't you come see me dance, and it's like, <sighs> um, <laughs> James, what do you want to go, go, go to the play place, like, right now. <laughs> And, you know, as respectfully as I could, it was one of those, I have no problem talking about stuff with you at all. But is there like a code word that we could say instead? Because my, ch and she was like, oh, well, my children are with me too. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I just don't want my children like, I, I want them to be respectful. That's not the, the issue. The, the issue for me is that, you know, <laughs> you came out and blurted it out and, 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 and like, it's not okay for me. Like, you know, it's not anything against it at all, obviously. But is there a way to discuss that and not, like, work hard, like, so blatant because, you know, my children are minors, you know? And she brought up, well, my children are minors, too. Yes, but I haven't had that talk with them. And you made it where I now have to talk with them about it, which is fine. I'll talk with them about it, but you could have, like, you know, give, like, you just, just saying, like, there are way, like, I, and so in that regard, when it came to the lifestyle, it was one of those, if I recognized people in public, and, and they recognized me, it was one of those, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, and I didn't have to go into certain aspects. And in terms from that one, one event taking place, any event I actually went to was one of those, okay, if it was at somebody's house and a neighborhood, well, be <laughs> not going, no. You might look at my makeup and be like, what type of makeup is that? But, you know. Other than that, you wouldn't see what I was wearing as far as, like, my corset, you know, and, like, the different, like, whatever, because of the way I would dress to drive out there. And so it was one of those, if I, if it was in, like, a residential place and it was daylight out, especially, it was one of those, I'll change there, or I will, you know adjust my outfit when I actually get inside the house. So that way I'm not disrespectful 
to the different areas because I don't know who has children. I don't know who has, you know, never seen stuff like that before. I already knew no matter where I went in Texas, my haircut and my hair color would automatically, you know, get looks. So it was one of those, okay, what can I do to not only not cause problems to whichever location I'm going to, but to the people who own that house? And you know, it was just one of those, I don't want to, I don't want to cause any problems in that regard. And so from that one particular situation, and while, again, I don't have problems with that at all, I obviously go, or have, but, you know, in that regard, it was one of those, um, and she actually got offended. She, 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 she got offended at first, and it was one of those, I go to all stars, I don't deny that. I hang out with the dancers and stuff like that. We talk all, you know, the different ones. However, like, they all, like, the majority of the dancers, they, and cocktail waitresses and stuff like that, they know that I'm not going to be disrespectful to them there or out in public. Can you have some, like, respect for that? Because... You know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like it just, it's, it's a thing. I can't be the only person that would be taken aback by that. And so she had gotten upset because she was like, what are you, are you embarrassed of me? And I was, no, that's the thing. I'm not embarrassed to speak. I'm still speaking with you here. Like we're, st we didn't go outside we're still inside of, of the McDonald's at that point. It's like, I have no problem discussing that with you. I have no problem. The only thing that I'm bringing up to you is being respectful in regards to the fact that my children don't know that I go to adult clubs. You know, and when they're older, that's one thing. But they're in elementary school. I can't explain that to them without them going to their school and hanging out with their friends and talking about that. So, you know, and I have this thing about being truthful to my children. So, you know, like, that's all I'm saying. It's just, do you, do you, you know, I have no problem with you giving me a hug. I have no problem speaking with you. I obviously am not embarrassed to speak with you at all. In, in the club or out in public. However, <laughs> the aspects of bringing that up specifically, that's kind of like, like, and I had repeatedly said, the club and stuff like that, the, the, I repeatedly said, all stars, and it was one of those like, it's not a big deal, except for when in front of my children. They're minors. You know, my daughter was in preschool, my son was in kindergarten. So I was like, you know, hey, <laughs> children, they, they speak quickly. And, they, and so, you know, she got offended. She spoke with her boyfriend or whatever. And it was one of those, I could only do so much, which is kind of funny because, you know, then, you know, I turn around and there were a group of guys behind me. <laughs> And, they, and I look at them, I'm like, hey. <laughs> They're like, you actually like COVID? Yeah. I just don't need my minor children knowing about that. <laughs> like, I already look like I do. <laughs> and that's not like most moms nowadays. So, you know, I kind of got it. They're like, no, that's cool. We got it. We, we get it, you know, needing that to be on the down low. And it's like, yeah, and I'm not cheating, you know. I, I mean, you know, I'm not cheating on anyone. I just, I happen to actually enjoy going. I actually, and I was talking with the guys. It's, I realize now the dichotomy of that. <laughs> like males have never heard of a strip club before or an exotic dancer club or... <laughs> Or know exactly what place I was in in that regard but as a female in comparison
person. Although I'm sure there are plenty of exotic dancers who understand that in the other aspect of like their fans or whatever going up to them and being like, oh, you know, I haven't seen you at the club in a while and stuff, you know, like, or whatever. And so I did write about that. I don't deny that. And so I, I can't. <laughs> I would have. But nonetheless, it was just one of those, I don't have a problem acknowledging that and explaining that to my son and my daughter when they're older and know how to like, you know, but that dancer was upset and even the guys were like, she looks pissed at you. And I was like, I'm not trying to upset anybody, like, at all. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, just, you know, it's, it's a respect thing. And, you know, can children get into adult clubs? And they were all like, no, okay. So, you know, not having an issue discussing it out in the open, but can be, <laughs> and I'm a mom. So like, and I know that there are definitely dancers and, and adult like, style individuals who could very much relate to that. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm just trying to eat. <laughs> Come on now. So I was informed that Captain Beer was quickly switched over because he had a thing <laughs> for exotic dancers. And you know, could it, you know, have that separation and understanding in that regard? And it's one of those, I get it. <laughs> However, you know, yeah, you gotta, you, you gotta be respectful in that regard. And so, you know, and there was Captain Cupcake. <laughs> Captain Cupcake showed up, and I think this is also part of it because it was partially from what I had heard about that with the exotic dancer thing. And then the other part of, I went to an assembly <laughs> and it, there was the first general I had ever seen in, in like person. I mean, you know, spirit is different, of course, because, you know, so, you know, saw a one star, it's like, <gasps> at least in uniform, but I never, <gasps> you're a general. <laughs> Cupcake was, <laughs> and he was second Louis or first Louis, the one just before General. That's that's where it gets me backwards. Just like first Louis or second Louis. Nonetheless, you know, just he was standing next to the general. Just, I'm all in full camo, like I had. <laughs> see why I. <laughs> I have my BDUs on. <laughs> so cool. It's awesome. <laughs> With yeah, the whole the whole nine yards. Um, and then he looks at who 
about where you were speaking with it. I'll talk with you later. And so the whole time I was like, oh. <laughs> which is obviously those who have military backgrounds, you are not supposed to be like. <laughs> that general probably never forgot that day. <laughs> probably like, you won't believe what happened to me. <laughs> it's just oh, so excited like a little piddle puppy. So excited like a little puppy dog. Just like, oh, like <laughs> in uniform, camoed out, everything. <laughs> like a baby little puppy dog just running around. was her wagging her tail. <laughs> just, <laughs> she... <laughs> so then he asked like a couple of questions. What unit are you in? Oh, I'm in medical home. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're like a child. I am, I'm not. <laughs> I'm 17 years old. Yeah, that... <laughs> I'm sure that sounds so grown up at that point. <laughs> I am not a child, I'm 17 years old. <laughs> so grown up. <laughs> and so, we became Captain Cupcake and Captain Morning, you just kind of. How are you 17 years old? And both of them, both, both the general and, and Captain Cupcake. How are you 17 years old and in the army? I ought to get it. I got emancipated so that I could join. What did you just say, young lady? I got emancipated. I fought, I fought to get it. But I had, I had a dream on Sunday in 2000, and that's why I'm in medical school. <laughs> it's so great to meet you. BDU outfit. See why I couldn't stay in the army? <laughs> that would be every day. <laughs> Which, by technicalities, general who was a Mustang. I admit I was not all like, but I kind of was. And <laughs> so my then roommate, Alicia, we're, I'm driving the car to Fort Worth to, to, for her to spend time with her family and stuff like that. And as I'm driving in the neighborhood and the GPS is giving directions, so I'm like turning, you know, like less than three turns before getting to the driveway. She goes, oh, by the way. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't, <laughs> that does not sound like a good by the way, but a good by the way, but not a good by the way. So what is the by the way? <laughs> oh, uh, I should probably tell you. Oh, and she tells me that her dad was a, like a private first class or a private PB2 
when he was in the Korean War, and he got field grade, and then she said, I don't know what field grade, because that's what he told me. I said, uh-huh. <laughs> Pay attention to the road. <laughs> what? <laughs> got field grade promoted, and he's a, re he's a re retired, you know, however many stars general. And then, you know, pulled in the driveway. <laughs> Drove from San Antonio to Fort Worth. <laughs> you don't think you can give me that heads up at, at any point in time <laughs> from San Antonio to Fort Worth? <laughs> like, just a little bit of time. Could have brought that up. <laughs> some point <laughs> any time from San Antonio to Fort Worth at all no I'm gonna do fun so then you know when when meeting the, the <laughs> get out of the car tell my son you will salute them you will be respectful I will explain more to you later so that way you understand you are not gonna get this chance very often and so he's just like, okay, well, you know, you taught me how to salute to begin with. I know I did. So glad that I did that. But yeah, so then, you know, he goes in, my son goes in, and he's like, hi, thanks for your service. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and then I walk in, I'm like, so hello, thank you for your service. And I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm going to stay right here. Inside, I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> the equivalent of that one star general <laughs> but you know <laughs> right here Absolutely serious. I can answer for myself, sir. <laughs> just, which is ironic because that's probably the, the most like militaristic salute that I could have actually done and not in uniform. <clears throat> as far as camo and stuff, the irony of that. And so, <laughs> did I say it? <laughs> But nonetheless, you know, throughout, you know, the years, you know, thank you for your service. You guys have a good one. <laughs> thank you for your service to the country. Thank you for your service to the city. You know, and <laughs> irony, irony of that. Uh, I get it. I get it. The irony. Anyway, so <clears throat> after that whole, and you know, what's our channel? And <laughs> yes, that's probably exactly how I was speaking to that one star general as whoever was in the lobby area <laughs> of that assembly. What is she doing? Is she, is she, is she, is she bouncing? <laughs> like, who let Tigger out? <laughs> who let Tigger out? Because <laughs> that was like the... <laughs> Do that you were like this. Oh, the one star <laughs> you did that in front of a one star general? Was that not supposed to? <laughs> Was I not supposed to? <laughs> Was I not supposed to? No, you weren't. You're in <laughs> BDUs. You're supposed to be a soldier in your BDUs. I am. I didn't graduate basic training, so I'm not technically. So, like, 
by technicalities I am, but technically I'm not because I didn't graduate to basic training. <laughs> so the irony is that the day that Captain Beer was being transferred and Captain Morning or Captain Cupcake was taking over, in my Article 15 it actually said until I could act like a soldier. <laughs> Who could do BB training as a puppy? <laughs> I don't know if the phone is picking that up. I did a little puppy. Pick it up so it's not a little puppy bark. <laughs> and so. <laughs> <clears throat> so then, you know, <laughs> Captain Beer was, was switched out and, and Captain Morning took over. And. <laughs> And then after the brigade commander had retired and had his retirement party, you know, <laughs> I'm so glad that that wasn't in full, like, class A's, because I have a feeling it's a little late for me to figure this out, obviously. So there were probably a whole bunch of stars there, and I had no idea. <laughs> but Captain Cupcake, you know, he was like, you know, stay, stay with me, and, you know, and, and at that point, you know, called me Susan because of being at the event and stuff like that, and so, you know, this is, <laughs> this is Susan, <laughs> say hello to, you know, civilian, the civilian name, not, like, with the rank or anything, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you, <laughs> unit are you in? I'm in medical hall. <laughs> Why? You're like a child. I'm 15 years old. Grown up. <laughs> I'm so grown up. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're, you're grown up. Yes, I am. I'm so grown up. I got it. <laughs> or ish <laughs> I'm so grown up <laughs> yeah. I'm so grown up I got myself a mint so I can check the army I'm so grown up <laughs> transferred elsewhere or not and that was after some issues when it came to Cybert and Kaliva the two females that were um, transferred to medical hold unit <clears throat> from South Korea and I think they were at Seoul, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, um, and they were actually friends over in South Korea. And so it was one of those, whatever it is, what it is. We, we didn't get along. Captain Morning wanted me to be friends with them. It's like, I, I gave him the warning. I was like, my biological mother wanted me to be friends with females. And I didn't go over so well. I mean, there are females I can get along with. There are. Uh, those are not the types of females I can get along with. <laughs> no, 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 Cybert and Kaliva could be your friends. Uh, with friends like that who need them, yes. And Captain Morning just 
What did you just say? With friends like that, who needs enemies? I don't need to get to know them to know that I don't need friends like that. At all. And he was just, but, you know, like, you, you could, no, I can't. I can try. And I'll, I'll do the best I can. But I can only do so much. If they're going to remain as they are, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Because that's not, those are not friends. They're not even friends to one another. So, you know, why would, like, I mean, they call each other friends, but they're not friends. They're very similar, but no. no. I actually got along with, I can't remember what her name was, but I had her as a roommate. Um, her, her, she wound up getting married to a guy named Sean. And like, I was so envious. <laughs> I was like, how do you make your hair like that? How do you do that? And then like the clothes and stuff like that. And, and she actually taught me colors too. Cause like, what color is that? Cause I got made fun of for not like knowing this. And she was just like, this is, you know, whatever clothes that she has, and this is what this color is. Oh, okay. <laughs> really nice. You know, and, but my now that ex-husband wound up making fun of certain things when it came to um, when they were in ISR together. And I was like, I could see certain funny aspects in certain regards to what you're telling me. But what you're saying is the surrounding issue. I'm not seeing what's so funny. I could see certain similarities of certain things, but I you know, just say. And so is what it is and so but she could yeah she taught me colors too she taught me colors like she had such vibrant clothing like all the colors in her clothes her closet her wall locker were so vibrant i was like what is that <laughs> that is yellow oh okay that's yellow okay what color is that that's green oh color is that? <laughs> you are like a child. You know, I'm grown up. <laughs> so grown up. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and I told Captain Cupcake that, uh, well, I didn't call him Captain Cupcake like that, but not in <clears throat> I exactly. And so, you know, I, I got along with her. We understood one another, you know, when, when, like, we, we, like, she, we had set up the wall lockers to go in between the room to kind of, like, you know, I was at the door, essentially, but, like, you know, we had the wall lockers in between, and at one point in time before she wound up getting married, she had told me, she goes, you know, you were, like, the only person I've had as a roommate who didn't judge me. I was like, why would I? And that was when the wall lockers wound up going up. Uh, that, was, that was when she was like, "Oh my God, I got uh, you know what? Let's let's let's. Can you help me move the wall lockers to to put them in between the room? Yeah, okay. Like that? Yeah, just like that. Oh my God, you just did that. I did what? I just moved the wall lockers. That's all." Yeah, okay. Yeah, you did. What? They're just wall lockers. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I was, I was, I was going to wait for Sean to move those, but apparently you could just pick those up and put them in place. So that's cool. Thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's cool. Thanks. Wow. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, so, you know, and, and then she told me that they were getting married, and I was like, oh, I hope it works out, you know, I hope it gets better, and stuff like that, and she was like, yeah. Oh, my God, oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just be safe. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> so then, you know, after, afterwards, 
was, you know, um, then the company got Captain Pagata. And <clears throat> Captain Pagata got like, it, it just rolled downhill to him. Because <laughs> he, I don't know if he was briefed on certain aspects or not. But when, <clears throat> when Captain Pagata was put in charge of Medical Hold, that was when my now dead ex-husband had told me about EO and IG. And so I went to EO and IG about all the different stuff. And <laughs> I, did not, I did not see how that was going to go at all. Because I, I, was, I, I was under the impression it was one of those, yeah, well, I've already spoken with a bunch of people, so, you know what and he had said well what do you what is it that like you know what is he had asked what he could gain out of it now i realized you know obviously so you know but so i went to ig i think it was i think i went to ig first and i didn't even have to go to eo or either way, one way or the other and i walked into the master sergeant's office and she asked me to sit down and we started speaking and she goes, okay, hold on, hold on, just hold on. I, I need, I need, I need a notepad. <laughs> you need to pause real quick. And so I had to start over again and she just started taking notes and she was like, and after like the third, fourth or fifth page of notes, she goes, you know what? Hold on a second. <laughs> I gotta go get someone. Like, okay, sure. So she left the office, and I was thinking she was, I, I didn't know who she was going to get. <laughs> In walks a full bird colonel. Uh, I, I thought you were going, you didn't tell me you were going to get somebody high. <laughs> and then in walks a two, a, a, either a one or a two star behind the full bird colonel. <laughs> I wanted to do, I mean, inside I was, <laughs> I have a feeling that I can't be out like this, but like I want to be like. <laughs> One of those like feelings in the pit of your stomach where you're like, uh, hmm. Uh, and then, and then, and there, I know there are military and law enforcement guys who very much understand this when I <laughs> when I describe this. So <laughs> the, the 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 full bird colonel goes, okay, well you interrupted the meeting with the, with the general. I was like, I didn't, I didn't interrupt. I didn't, I lost stayed in my chair. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't interrupt. And then when the, 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 the stars walked in, so who interrupted my meeting? Not me. <laughs> Technically, I stayed in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused because I want to like, but like, I didn't interrupt your meeting. I didn't do that. Not me. I technically stayed in this chair this whole time. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and so then, you know, <clears throat> math nurse sergeant was like, so... She needs to discuss certain things and explain it to you. And so, oh, okay, I gotta start all over again. Okay. Ooh, I'm seeing stars, cause there was a general right there in stars. I can't count that high. <laughs> stars because I couldn't count that high at that time I could only count to two 
literally. And so, that was right before I got moved over to the Navy area. Who taught me how to count to 10. <laughs> Say, <clears throat> and so <laughs> I don't remember how many stars I saw, but I know I saw at least two. <laughs> and so then, you know, I started explaining stuff, and <laughs> then the the master sergeant went and got notepads for the, the colonel and the and the and the general and they started taking notes and yeah talk about me putting right on the spot for that <laughs> oh okay yeah yeah so many shinies I was already nervous to speak with the master sergeant and then in walks the colonel <laughs> one day <laughs> a master sergeant a colonel and a general walked into the office where I was <laughs> and so <laughs> she's saying and so you know they, they took notes and then you go back to medical hold. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got this. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and so then, you know, then Captain Pagata was called in with the first sergeant and and um um we all we all went to the brigade commander and that was, so you know i felt bad for captain Pagata because <laughs> he was there less than a week <laughs> i don't know what's going on and so yeah then the brigade commander was like well, looked in your file and there's no pay. Oh no, no, no! I had a, I had a counseling statement that I have to carry all of my counseling statements on me. <laughs> so I started emptying out all of my BDU pockets. So like, the pockets that were here, and the pockets that, and the pockets, and <laughs> but yeah, there was, and, and yeah, no, no, no. It was actually ideal timing because I didn't think that I could fit any more counseling statements into any of the pockets because they were all like it's like when it came to like like it's get it in there get it button come on go 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 around go <laughs> stay closed <laughs> And so, <laughs> it's a lot of counseling statements. And so then, yeah, um, the, the brigade commander was like, he's looking over everything and he goes, do, do I read this correctly? She's on restriction until she can act like a soldier? <laughs> you know you have to legally have an end date. But, and Captain Pagata was like, I was not in charge at the time. <laughs> I just, oh man, I felt so bad for Captain Pagata. I did. I felt so bad. <laughs> Still do. That had to be traumatic for him. Like, why am I being, I mean, going to the brigade commander's office? And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> and so, yeah. So so medical hold had a had a had a had a, had a quick turnover aspect um, back in two thousand. However, you know, um, in, in certain regards, it was actually a good thing. Um, not just in regards to those different company commanders, and not just 
in regards to, um, I mean, obviously the situations I dealt with, obviously, nobody wants to deal with that sort of stuff. Um, however, you know, it, it did get changed, the, the name, the Warrior Transition Unit, um, but by the time of, you know, when my now dead ex-husband wound up being in Warrior Transition Unit, which used to be medical hold, there were a lot of changes. You know, they, they, the guys no longer had to go and figure a way to get from, from where the barracks were at that time to get to Bamsi or Samsi now. Um, because, you know, I, I got lost all the time. And then even, like, even though there were the, the, the bus routes, you know, that took, you know, um, the different soldiers to and from Bamsi, issues with numbers, and, you know, and then trying to, anybody have issues recognizing one building from another on a military installation? I cannot be the only person, and it cannot be just because of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. I am sure that I am not the only one. I'm not real. They all look the same. <laughs> where, where, <laughs> which building, you know? And, and so at some point, the, the bus driver actually started calling out the numbers. Because it was like, I don't know where, what, where, <laughs> where is, so, you know, the, there were a lot of, I mean, as, as, as difficult as it was at that time, and, and I can't deny that, and, and those who were in medical hold at those times, you know, and not just when in 2000, but before, you know, the, it, you know, they'd be able to be like, yeah, that was, that was an issue. And so, you know, I was, I was able to not only, and, and part of the thing, I, and I know I didn't have to, however, part of the thing that I decided was, you know, when my now dead ex-husband, then just ex-husband, um, had been stationed at Fort Sam, it was one of those, well, I will come and pick you up and you can spend, you know, the weekend, you know, with, you know, James and Lydia, although it was it was and or go to Fort Worth and stuff like that and, and see you know my ex-in-laws nonetheless is what it is and so and I didn't I, I actually enjoyed speaking with you know grandma and grandpa Nichols and, and Tony and there were I can't deny there were times where I enjoyed speaking with Susie Marie Nichols Lopez however you know at that time it was one of those I'm gonna back off because you need to spend time with him like you guys need to spend time with him as well as James and Lydia. I don't need to be all up in your guys' stuff. Like you guys need to have this time together. Like you need to be able to spend time as you need. And Grandpa Nichols, you know, especially he he was always extremely appreciative because he especially knew. I didn't have to do any of that. And he very much knew I did not have to do any of that. And it was one of those, you know, and I, I, we'd spend hours talking, just like when, you know, before the final separation, we spent hours talking, hanging out and stuff like that. And, and you know, it was one of those, you know, he constantly saying, thank you. Like, for, I, I don't want to be the stereotypical ex-wife. I don't want to be the stereotypical, you know, aspects. I want you to make sure you have your time with, you know, that way you guys can, you know, talk about stuff. And, and that came, you know, like that was just natural for me. It was difficult, but it was natural. It was just one of those, I don't want to impede on anything. I don't want to like, you know, be overbearing or anything like that. You guys get what you need as far as like time and stuff like that and I'll, you know, I'll just, you know, we'll be able to hang out later and, and talk and stuff. And we did, you know, we did. There wasn't a weekend that, you know, taking my now dead ex-husband, then just ex-husband, but 
also my son and my daughter to Fort Worth where I mean there were each each weekend we each day it was you know Friday Saturday and then Sunday Grandpa Nichols and I would speak several hours and just you know talk which was no different than before the final separation with the exception of during the first separation, because then there was not that at all. But any any time, it was just we we sat and we talked. And it, <laughs> Susan, you need to quit smoking. Yeah, but I think it's better that I save lives and continue. Like I think I think it's a better idea that I, I save lives by smoking because if I don't smoke, <laughs> that's dangerous. So I'd rather just, you know, keep my, my temper under control. Like, there are other ways I know that I can be in a better mood. But, you know, since there are other aspects, you know, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just smoke a cigarette and save some lives. You know, with each inhalation, you have no idea how many lives I'm saving. <laughs> and he just, each time he would look at me, he's like, that is a twisted joke. And it's like, but it's the truth. <laughs> truly is. It's, it's, it's the truth, Grandpa Nichols. Just say it. And he just, uh, yeah, I could see, because he had seen certain things. He was just like, yeah, you, after after a certain point, he was like, I'm just going to say this because, you know, but you should, but I'm not going to say it after this for this time we talk. Okay, but I'm telling you, saving lives. <laughs> saving lives. Better when I'm in a good mood than when I'm not really is very hot nickels. But in that regard, you know, with each weekend that I go to Fort Sam Houston, I was able to see the different things. And it was at some point I was like, I want to see the barracks. I want to see like what they've done. And my now dead ex-husband, then just ex-husband, he goes, well, why do you want to see the barracks? Because that was not when I was in medical hold. I want to see how they have improved things. So that way, you know, I mean, I know obviously I can see the building from the outside, but I want to see like how much they have, have, have helped these guys. And my now dead ex-husband, then just ex-husband, why do you care so much about all the soldiers? Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, Okay. And so, you know, walked around and stuff like that. It's like, oh, got a got an exercise area, that's good. That's good. And oh, you know, it's walking distance. Straight, you know, straight shot to BMC, that's cool. What's that building there? And he's like, Oh, that's the center for the intrepid. Oh. Cool. Cool. Who did that? Like that that's that's really awesome, whoever did that. You know, not just the construction workers, whoever got that place situated, that's that's awesome, that's really cool. Major credit to that guy. And he, <laughs> he looked at me and goes, yeah, have you ever heard of Denzel Washington? Because he also knew, obviously, that I hadn't watched, you know, a lot of movies or anything. I was like, no. <laughs> Who is he? He's like, oh, he's a, he's a big actor. Oh, well, that's really cool that he did that. That's, that's really cool that he did that. That's, that's, that's really awesome. And it's fantastic that he did that. That's awesome. You know, and if he's an actor, well, then he definitely understands that if it wasn't for guys, you know. That's cool. That's cool. And so, you know, <laughs> at that point, you know, Cactus Jack was there. Bill Jr. and he goes, Denzel Washington built that. And I looked at him and I'm like, no, he didn't build that. He <laughs> he helped with that being a thing. So that like he didn't build I mean, he probably had something to do with like actually checking on things, but he didn't like lay the foundation himself. There were construction workers who did that. He didn't, you know, put up the frames himself. There were construction workers who did that. You know, he didn't put the electric in. Those were, you know, electricians who did that. But he made sure, like, and had to explain that. 
didn't think I'd have to actually explain that. Whatever. <laughs> but it was one of those, okay, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That is awesomely great. And, you know, just, you know, um, what was it? Uh, my, there was some point where I got to meet some soldiers that were in warrior transition unit and it's like, oh, you know, who's this? And my now dead ex-husband, then ex-husband goes, oh, this is my ex-wife. And they were like, oh, why is she here? And I was like, oh, and I explained the, 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 the situation and they were like, oh, wow. I was like, so how is it since you guys have, have been, because I, I used to be a medical hole before it was warrior transition unit. So how has it been since, you know, because obviously you guys have a lot better than, than when I was in, you know, so that's cool. And, you know, they told me certain things and I was like, okay, well, there are ways to fix that. And I gave them some ideas and stuff like that. And they were just, wow, you know, what was it like when it was, you know, medical hold? And I was like, oh, we had to travel from the actual base to get to appointments. You guys, that's good. That means you guys can get better quicker. You guys don't have to deal with certain things that when when I was in and the guys that I was in with, you know, we had, we had to deal with quite a bit. So this is, this is really good that these guys have stepped it up and made sure, you know, you guys are taken care of. How is, you know, how is this? How is that? And then, <laughs> then my now dead ex-husband, then just ex-husband, he, he got upset. He goes, who want to leave the bitch I don't care. I want to know what's going on. I'll make sure that they're taken care of. And if I didn't have that, that time where I got to walk around and talk with some of the, the soldiers in warrior transition unit, some of the things that I wound up having to go up the chain of command about later on, I wouldn't have been able to bring to the attention for them to be squared away. So it kind of was a, it was a double-edged sword in certain regards, I guess. And so it was one of those, okay, okay. And at that point I had some, like I had this particular Asian tattoo and that one, and that one, they're healing symbols. And, and they were, there were a couple guys that had asked, why do you have those? And I explained my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And they're just, oh, okay, okay. And it, <laughs> with each time of, of going to warrior transition unit, you know, there were a bunch, you know, <laughs> they'd be standing with, with my now dead ex-husband, then ex-husband, and, you know, I'd go to get out of the car. No, I want to leave right now. They only want to speak with you. It's like, that's fine. It, it, he would throw a fit, just like, <laughs> you know, beforehand. How dare they want to speak with you? Oh, yeah, how, how dare they have, you know, I just want to make sure. So it would inevitably, I'd piss them off some more. I'd get out of the car. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? Everything okay? And, you know, not, e not each and every time, but a lot of times, which only made him more angry. Because, why do you care about, how dare you care about warrior transition unit soldiers, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about you whining. I don't care. Why don't you spend time with James and Lydia? Why don't you speak with them instead of complaining? How about that? How about that? That, 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 like, you know, you get some things. Just saying. And so, you know, it, it, while, <laughs> yes, admittedly, in certain regards, it was a benefit because it pissed him off. <laughs> it did. It made him so mad that I would go and speak with them and ask them, what's going on with your, your guys' stuff? How's your appointments going? You guys keeping up with things and so on and so forth? They'd be able to tell me things. And I was like, okay, cool. Cool. That's, you guys can, you know, with certain ones, you guys can go speak with these guys. You know, you guys can go speak with these guys, you know, so on and so forth. And then, you know, I found out that they had different people that were assisting with other things for certain, depending on what the, the injuries were. And I was like, okay, good. You guys are, 
are being taken care of. What's going on when you guys get out? And each of them, anytime I ask that, um, what do you mean? Well, you guys are, are being taken care of better than, you know, when I was in. What happens when you guys get out? Are you guys squared away for when you get out? Because, you know, this is while you're, you're active. So, you know, what's, what's going on with that? You know, and they were just kind of, um, we don't know. Okay. All right. Well, that's something to pay attention to. So that way, you know, when out of active duty and not having to wear uniforms constantly and so, you know, because they, they got different benefits in that regard. It's like, okay, um, what do you mean? There, is there like a system set up like for you guys to be squared away, taken care of? Because, you know, guys that have certain things going on you know, <laughs> need to make sure you guys are taken care of properly. And, and the situations are, you know, legitimately okay. You guys don't need any additional problems. I mean, yeah, inevitably in life, certain things happen. However, like once, you know, once you're out, you know, and, and albeit, yes, obviously I was dealing with my own stuff, but it was just one of those, what, what, what happens when you guys get out? And so, you know, I want to make sure that you guys are, are taken care of. You know, I mean, not that, not that I'm the one who's in charge of doing all that stuff, because obviously there are the different you know, branches and divisions of the government and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to be paying attention, make sure, so that way, you know, you know, you guys are putting your lives out there. I'll make sure, like, <laughs> and there was one guy, I can't remember what his name was, and it was during one of the multiple weekends, you know, in that regard. He was, you're like such a mom. <laughs> Well, I did give birth to two children, so that's it. <laughs> if you knew how long those labors were, I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, you know, I, I, I did, you know, I, 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 I did do that, and I am a mom, so you know that does, that does occur, you know, and I don't want to just worry about you guys in that regard, but you know whatever families and stuff like that that you guys wind up having, you know, because you guys have, like, multitudes of things. So then, you know, later on found out that there was the development of the Wounded Warrior Project, and, you know, um, there was already the American Legion and the Disabled American Veterans and the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and it's like, that's good for like hangout locations. That's that's good for you know spending time, you know, and then the Wounded Warrior Project, yes, they do certain aspects of the the living situations for certain guys, and it's like, okay, what needs to be taken care of elsewhere? Because and, and not in a not in a negative way. I don't I don't want to come across as rude. And it's just one of those, okay, you know, there are guys who don't fit in those categories that they can be in that. And so despite what I was dealing with when I was in Washington State, you know, I was one of those, okay, <laughs> I have all these ideas. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and again, going to my Medal of Honor art project, you know, for, for certain stuff, and, and so, yeah, but, you know, at the point that when I went to Warrior Transition Unit, it was like, oh, you actually have a set unit, brigade almost set up in comparison to when I was in. 
because when I was in, there were the the transition guys, irony, um, where it was, you know, whoever didn't have too many soldiers in whatever unit they were in charge of, whether or company, you know, whether they were in charge of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, or Foxtrot, you know, company in that brigade that I was in. And like, okay, this, okay, one step at a time. So, you know, but for those who haven't understood, it's one of those, there, there have been a lot of, and it's only been 20 years since when I was in medical hold. Think about all the, the guys beforehand that, you know, so it's just be mindful. You know, and so that, that you didn't see that was where this particular one was going to go. <laughs> I would guess to me not. So, um, nonetheless, you know, also, you know, while being mindful of different things in regards to what I was doing, it's one of those that didn't discount or neglect when it came to the police officers and fire department and stuff like that and getting that sort of stuff squared away and you know what was it um i had listened to the news a few times and what was it um john stewart fighting for the the firefighters and stuff like that it's like that's cool that's cool, you know, and, and, you know, other different individuals that, you know, going and, and, and doing what they can in other regards to assist and further better men, because John Stewart, if I'm not mistaken, he actually was in New York during that time frame in 2001, and, or from New York. And so, <clears throat> I had actually sent some of the first two books, the first two books in specific, out to him at Comedy Central and stuff, among others. And, um, you know, like the current president of the United States of America sent that to them and stuff. So, yeah. But at the same time, I'm still doing what I can to keep, you know, Congress and Senate, you know, updated in that regards. Because, I mean, I had, I had registered the books through the Library of Congress. And then hand-delivered books to Senator Murray's office when I was in Washington State. After also giving to Miss Catherine Caramel, I handled that copy of all and which was ironic because it was like right before the Purim festival. <laughs> and, and my son had, um, you know, being, being, being a child, you know, being like, mom, you asked so many questions. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> you're about to meet some people that are very similar to people I grew up like hanging out with their parents in regards to not not necessarily in church, some in church, but especially at Old Santa Presbyterian Church. We always had um, a rabbi that would come to the church and go over like the traditional Passover stuff and, and different um, older Hebrew traditions and stuff like that. And that was well before I went through confirmation class. And so it was one of those, you know, <laughs> you're about to meet some people. <laughs> and if you think I ask questions, you don't know. <laughs> but you're about to see some very similar aspects 
And so <laughs> after we had gone to the Pure Festival and we were we were leaving and going back to Lakewood, James, my son, he looks at me and he goes, I thought you asked questions. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I do, but you know. What happened? <laughs> what occurred? Did you did you meet any yetis? <laughs> she said, did you? Did, what, what questions did you get? I thought you asked a lot of questions about what I do. I got to ask this, 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 this. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> See? I don't ask that many questions now, do I? No, not at all. <laughs> and there are those who know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I had asked, at one point I was like, did anybody do this to you? <laughs> Louis before at random times was one of those okay I can see it's not the exact same when it comes to Fort Sam Houston or JBSA of course but you know a lot of different aspects like okay where is that understand certain things when it came to what I tried to explain before winding up in Washington State or maybe even after. Well, maybe this <laughs> assists a little bit. Subscribe to my channel, go to my website. You guys have a good one.